Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ma'am, shall we start? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. yes ma uh, warm good morning to our respected research person, Professor Dr. C. Gurunath, uh, Gurudath, sir, principals, deans, and HODs of various law institutions, faculty members, and the dear participants of this faculty development program. I am Kritika Dhanapal, Assistant Professor of Law and one of the co conveners of this FDP, and I am going to be the moderator of the day. On behalf of the Chennai Dr. Ambedkar Government Law College, Pudupakam, our beloved principal, Professor Gauri Ramesh, ma'am, and our organizing team, I welcome you all to the day six forum session of this FDP. We are here today, successfully entering into the day six of the FDP, and I hope our dear participants are enjoying this FDP to the fullest. Excellence is not being the best but it is doing your best. And I attribute this statement to our beloved principal and the convener of this FDP, Professor Dr. Gauri Ramesh, ma'am, and call Madam to give our welcome address. Please, ma'am. Thank you, Kritika. Uh, very good morning to one and all present here for the uh, first session of the uh, sixth day of the FDP program. On behalf of the Directorate of Legal Studies and Chennai Dr. Ambedkar Government Law College, Pudupakam, I deem it a great privilege to welcome our resource person for the day, respected Professor uh, Dr. C. A. Gurudath, Sir, uh, Professor and uh, Dean, SRM School of Law, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. Sir is an acclaimed academician with a long stint in teaching as well as an administration. The fine quality of law education of the SRM School of Law is an apt example of Sir's administrative caliber, and he leaves no stone unturned when it comes to helping the career development of his faculty members, as well as motivating his students. The successful conduct of the English and Tamil moot competitions every year so diligently in the SRM School of Law promulgates the keen interest he shows in the students' co-curricular activities apart from their academic interests. Sir, I take this opportunity to wholeheartedly thank you for kindly accepting our invite and giving the privilege of hearing your valuable lecture, sir. Sir's topic for today will be role of uh, law teacher in the classroom, past, present, and future. So with these few words, I welcome all the participants and thank you once again, sir. Over to you, Kritika. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your welcome address. So now I take the privilege in welcoming our speaker of the session, uh, respected Professor Dr. C. A. Gurudath, sir, Professor of Law and Dean SRM School of Law, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker of the session to inspire you all. Sir, as a senior academician, having a different having a distinct experience spread over more than three and a half decades, which includes teaching, research, and administration. Sir has obtained his MA degree in political science, a master's in law, and PhD in law degree from Mysore University. He has successfully completed his MBA degree from Malgapa University. He served postgraduate studies in law, Mysore University, for about 15 years as visiting professor. Sir has worked in different capacities like principal of law college, academic advisor, Dean and Director in Charge Law, Dean Academics, Controller of Examination, Acting Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor and President, etc. Sir is the Founder, Director and Dean of School of Law of uh, Jagran Lake City University, Bhopal. He has served as President, Vice, uh, Vice Chancellor of Raffles University, uh, Nimrana, Rajasthan. Sir founded Global Academy of Management, Education and Services as its Founding Director. Sir, uh, Sir is the Vice President of International Society for Promotion of Agricultural and Food Products Exports. He has successfully guided a number of students for PhD program. He has executed funded projects, evaluated a number of PhD theses for prestigious national and international universities. He has, in, he, he has to his credit rich experience in research through publications of articles and books, participation in national and international seminars, conferences, and workshops in different capacities. He is a pioneer in organizing national and international academic events. He has served International Association of Law Schools in its different committees and visited number of foreign universities on academic assignments. Sir also held key positions as a member of several policy-making bodies and advisory bodies of different institutions and universities. 
he has served many high profile you know, institutions as visiting and guest uh, professor sir's area of expertise includes constitutional law family law law and social transformation environmental law media law and many more moreover he is profoundly loved and respected by his students and colleagues for his contribution as a teacher and leader with, uh, with 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 a great character and expertise so without consuming any time i would like to call upon our beloved guest professor dr c a guru gurudev sir to enlighten our audience on the topic role of law teachers in the classroom past present and future welcome you, sir thank you kritika thank you for good words thank you gauri madam for good words i do not know to what extent i deserve your compliments but one thing is true i happened to born few years before than the younger generation who are amidst us that gave me some opportunity to hold the positions or to you know give my you know learning or whatever it is when you say expertise it's very difficult to quantify expertise anyway let us uh, take that in a, a contemporary perspective fine now at the outset i would like to <clears throat> share one thing whatever whatever i am going to share with you is out of my personal experience and observation in addition to it on the basis of uh, this i can prognose how the things may move in future and please take it from me whatever i say or whatever i submit whatever i feel not necessarily be the truth not necessarily be the truth ultimately the truth is to be found out by each and every participant here see there is one saying quite often i use that satyam means the truth is ek it is always one vipraha bahuda vadanti the scholars define it in the different perspectives according to their experience and according to their perception according to their perception and very crude example is given for that so some five visually impaired persons if you feel an elephant different parts of the element how they feel that that is a very crude example often given for that yes whatever things i could be able to see i could be able to experience whatever problems i faced in my professional career yes on the basis of that i will share that with all confidence i tell you one thing i could be able to see two major shifts in uh, legal education and i could see five generations of uh, legal professionals when i entered a law school for my studies in early 70s the teachers two teachers even today i remember were high profile practitioners advocates who were 90 who were 90 and 90 plus one shrinivas achar and another one is ram ram even today i cannot forget them the, the age gap between the students and the taught itself was around 60 to 70 years that generation then the next generation my contemporaries and even in my in the process you know i could be able to see and uh, interact with many very dynamic very dynamic brains my dear friends uh, just some 10 to 15 minutes before gauri madam shared with me that there are around 300 participants i draw a presumption that majority of them are either new entrants into the profession or may have maybe have some 5 to maximum 10 years of experience of course there may be exceptions there are teachers or very well experienced who may be more knowledgeable but on the other hand majority is like that yes it is our job to share the experience and guide you also how you guide your students in the classroom 
it happens like this if you look at a tree you will find lot of uh, flowers leaves getting leaves fruits but it is uh, supported by a stem which keeps going but inside you know deep rooted that roots what we call that holds the entire tree that holds the entire tree there was a great poet who said this if you want to enjoy the beauty of that tree you should always remember the roots the old roots the visible stem and the flowers and the fruits you find you know leaves you know that makes the entire body that is actually the knowledge this is how the things come yeah lot of persons they have done a lot of things they have contributed a lot of things sometimes i tell my young friends that you need not go and reinvent the wheel wheel is already been invented our job is how best we can use that where we can use that aircraft also needs wheels your bicycle also needs you know that even an ordinary in a pull cart it also needs some wheel and a stretcher in the hospital also need a wheel and we are very well aware of the wheelchair wheel is common but design is different and how we use is different like that according to the situation and according to circumstances we should interpret the thing but basic philosophy never fails second foundation few basic problems are concerned or features rather why always to speak of problem features are concerned they are universal in nature look today we are thinking of what are the problems being faced by the law teachers we list of huge list is there so our problem number 1 problem number 2 problem number 3 problem number 4 like that and in it there is a notion in the minds of many that oh europe it is excellent america it is excellent that is no everywhere problems are there and problems are similar problems of students maybe of concentration or maybe of their inquisitiveness or maybe of their participation or whatever it is degree may vary but problems are there i have got first hand information i do have first hand information you don't find much difference infrastructure with all confidence i tell you many law schools in india today they do have better infrastructure than the so called elite law schools of uh, west or america or whatever it is but the problems teachers are facing few are universal few are basic of course the approach difference there is difference in approach yes friends uh, my screen is already there you know uh, sir no sir uh, you are you are at the chat Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Now visible, yeah. sir. Yeah, visible, sir. Yes, fine. Here, when you say role of teachers in the classroom, past, present, and future, past, as I said, you know, it is just a foundation. Always, great scholars are of the opinion that without knowing the past, it is not at all possible to understand the present, and you cannot visualize, you cannot become a visionary in the future. Like his, it is not necessarily entire history. Past means our experience. What we are experiencing, because legal education or institutions are not overnight development. They have got a very long history. Okay, fine. <clears throat> What happened? There is something, some problem. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, you can move. You can move yes, to the next. Slide. It has uh, come. No, no, sir, it's coming. Please move to the next slide, sir. Slide two no, is no, empty, no. sir. So ha, you can move ha, to the ha, third ha. slide. Yeah, yeah. See, at the moment we get into any discussion, first we should look into the relevance of that. How we have positioned the thing. Normally, when I talk to, when I go for an interaction with any student. whether for phd or project or whatever it is the first question i ask is what is the contemporary relevance of this topic 
what is the contemporary relevance of this uh, seminar or workshop or whatever it is. I need not emphasize the importance of that. This is the need of the world. See, here, legal education as on today, as on today, is one of the major disciplines, unlike the position which was 50 years before. And another thing I would like to tell here, legal education is taking visible shifts once in every 25 years. That I will explain later on. Once in 25 years, 25 years, you will see visible shifts. But inside that the current is ever flowing, that is there, but visible is the 25 years. So, so far as uh, uh, the basic things are concerned, streams, you know, the, this uh, law, legal education and a lot of teachers, you know, they play a very big role today globally. Okay, fine. And now the education, the approach towards legal education is become very, very professional. Very, very professional. Because a lot of concentration is there. And a lot of bodies are there. Whether it is a Bar Council of India in, in India, or it is American Bar Association, ABA, America, or British Bar Council, like that in every country, they do have their own body. Here, in addition to Bar Council, you do have UGC, and governments are there. And if it is an affiliate college, university is there. So it's highly institutionalized now and monitored and guided. Legal education is very much guided now, very much guided. Then here, first what I do, you know, I go for a brief sketch, how this is regarding the development of uh, this legal education and uh, how this legal education and teachers did grow. Because you cannot imagine legal education in the absence of teachers. How can it be any discipline, you know? How can you imagine education in the absence of teacher? That's impossible. The moment you say, I'm learning something, please read, there is one teacher behind that. Right? Then, see, now, as son today, as son today, there is a huge expectation of the society and the profession. In addition to it, for what we should get prepared ourselves. That is future expectations of the profession, society, etc. These are the corners of my discussion. This is how I would like to proceed. Then let me give you a very small, uh, you know, idea or a, let me go for a small sketch regarding the historical development. Dear friends, if you look at the legal education, whether it is east or west or south or north, globally, earlier stage, stages, you know, there was no formal legal education as such. Legal education, either it was a part of rhetoric or part of logic or part of philosophy or theology. Because many laws were the part of religion, religious scriptures. Therefore, a philosopher would like a part of law also, how it to be done. And if you come to India, Dharma Shastras would prescribe what are the duties of a king, what are the duties of a, you know, uh, uh, the Prajadmi citizen. Suppose if some offense is there, how to punish, what kind of punishment. So you have got a lot of, lot of, uh, lot kind of stuff so far as that aspect is concerned. But mathematics, a dis discipline. Medicine, a discipline. But law was not an independent discipline. However, if you do an in-depth study, first independent law school was found in 551 AD in by, name, uh, by name, Beirut School of Law. And uh, the primary job of that school was to teach Roman law. Afterwards, because of some invasion, it was spoiled, destroyed. And after very four or five cent you know, centuries, you know, they could not go for any such a law school, this and that. Almost till 18th century and 19th century, later part of 18th century, and early part of 19th century, it was not a formal education at all. Then how they used to do? Even so called America, how they used to do? 
how they used to do look they used to do like this to become an attorney he would go and read the books independently then work under a solicitor or an attorney then you yourself is a license to do this job society will recognize you oh he is a knowledgeable man we can hire his services and the senior attorneys they would and judges they would uh, take the role of they would play the role of a teacher and the first law school in america was found in 1793 by name litchfield law school litchfield law school and afterwards you know followed by harvard then stanford and all the other institutions came into being and we law teachers we should not afford to forget the name of a professor james kent he was the first designated professor of jurisprudence in 1793 so uh, i used to call him the grandfather of uh, law teachers i repeat name james kent 1793 was first officially designated professor law professor 1793 yes i believe everyone in this assembly we are familiar with the names who have mentioned here i will just indicate it the list is not exhaustive john austin great how can you no finish your study on jurisprudence with dr john austin austin theory he was working for benthamet university and of course he succeeded bentham bentham was not a full time teacher he was a philosopher he was not a teacher regular teacher he was a philosopher but his in his name in a university you know by his name john austin was made a professor he was teaching law then henry main you know it and for your kind information henry main taught law in india also and he has authored a book ancient roman law and i was told that he authored book when he was serving here in calcutta then seveni hans seveni was university of berlin montesco of course he was a judge and he was a part time teacher then uh, you can erlich he was you know working for university of uh, zevovitz C.K. Allen, Oxford, Dugate, excellent Dugate series, excellent theory. You know, he worked for University of Bordeaux and Roscoe Pond, Harvard, Nebraska. They were all great teachers. All great teachers. No, why I am emphasizing this point? I am emphasizing the point because it is the law teachers and the philosophers. who developed the entire jurisprudence and what you call law the entire body of law is developed by them these persons they are teachers sometimes they are general teachers sometimes they are professional teachers when you call them a professor of a university professional teacher bentham was a general teacher kant the general teacher general philosopher then i think we should normally what we do we remember few foreign authors and foreign for i know personal normally we will forget my dear friends we cannot uh, afford to forget the great teachers of the past like brahaspati narada shankar and liketa they are brothers and author beautiful you know uh, what you call legal samhita law samhita then uh, chanakya very well aware of that great teacher if you come to this a 20th century Professor Ram Rao, I think Gauri Madam and friends they may remember his name. Such a scholar, you know, who promoted dozens, dozens of scholars, dozens, dozens of scholars spread in the different parts of country. Great teacher, it's a great teacher, Professor Ram Rao, and Professor Upendra Bhakshi. How to forget him? Then uh, Rahmatullah Khan of JNU, it's a great teacher, international law. Professor Anand. a outstanding teacher and i think at least a majority of the teachers here you are familiar with n r madhavan list goes like this why i am again this list is not exhaustive but their contribution towards legal education suppose if you take see professor ramrao is concerned he was a traditional teacher 
conventional teacher. If you come to Upendra Bhakshi, this approach is totally different. Very rational, dashing. Always go for new ideas, new concepts. Professor Anand, research oriented. Madhumanan, institution building and uh, always, you know, give new directions. And always there is Madhubanan, you know, he is uh, called, uh, often called as the father of, uh, you know, legal studies. Then, uh, if I limit myself to India and how the legal education uh, did develop and what was the role being played by the teachers in the past, you know, dear friends, in the 17th century or 18th century, 19th century, we did not have any independent law school. You know it very well. What was the position of India? We were ruled by British. Their education pattern was different. Of course, people from India, they would go to Britain, Great Britain, and take one degree, and they're called as bar at law, barrister. And they had a different certificate course, like, you know, pleaders, this and that, solicitor, that they own a system. The people would go there, study something and come back. And then what happened when they established a Supreme Court in the provinces? The first day, they had one Supreme Court judicature in Bombay, like that they had in Calcutta also, fine, in Bombay. They are the Chief Justice of that, by name, Thomas Erskine Perry. He was the Chief Justice. Do you know what he used to do? After the court towers, he used to teach law to the persons who were interested in learning law and allowing them to go for some small examination to, to, to become pleaders, this and that. We cannot forget him. But the unfortunate thing, you know, he got retirement, he went back to England, and in honor of his service, a chair was established, a professorship was established. Again, another British judge by name R.T. Reid, he was appointed as the professor of jurisprudence in his name, in the you know, name of... Uh, Perry, the first professor, Indian professor, law professor. Again, please understand, these, these persons were not full-time professors. Their major job was in judiciary. In addition to it, out of law or commitment or whatever it is, you know, the president. Immediately, the first law college came into being. You all know it very well. Bombay Law College, now they call it Government Law College. Historical law college has produced five presidents and number of attorneys, very high profile advocates. They are all from this government law college, Bombay. Of course, even today they have maintained that standard. The candidate students from Bombay Law School, they have got a unique uh, quality. Uh, again, the institutions follow one after the another. Then each university, traditional university, they started uh, opening their own uh, law college, law colleges. They get started giving affiliation to the law colleges. Then in the classroom, I made it very clear. My dear friends, when we speak of uh, uh, any teaching, I remember one Subhashit. Of course, it comes in... Uh, Udyoga Parva of Mahabharata. You know what is that? The teacher and taught relationship. Acharyat Padamadate. I simplify it. It is in Sanskrit. Acharyat. Acharya means teacher. There is difference between guru and teacher. Of course, today, colloquially, we call everyone as guru. To attain the status of guru is not that easy. That is a highly philosophical and spiritual kind of thing. Here, teacher, Acharya, means a teacher. We are all Acharyas, teachers. Acharya, from teacher, how much you gain? 25% one-fourth. Achama, Pada, Pada means four. Just one-fourth. Padama, Dante. Then, Padam, Shishya, Swamedhaya, self-study. Even today, we ask the students, go, study this. Go for that case law, refer that paper article, do this, do that. Swami Dhaya. Self study. So 50% done, you know, the product is baked only for 50%. Mm -hmm. Not sufficient. Then another quarter, 
Padam sa brahmachari bhyaha means friends and contemporaries. With interaction, discussion, debate, everything. He goes on adding the things into his brain, mind or whatever it is. Now he's 75%. And still 25% is there, you know. How? How? How that? Uh, padam. Then it's the last part, you know. It is always Kala Pramenaha. Time. That is experience. The society that it teaches you. In that process, you go you know, in management studies, they normally they use this. Learning and unlearn unlearning. Learning and unlearning. Learning and unlearning. Learning and unlearning. Yes, whatever you believe now, after some experience, you say, no, it is not correct. It is something wrong. It is a continuous process. Anyway, keeping this as the background, if you look into it, majority of the lawyers or law teachers that today, they are a person today. Yes, they are a personality today. Through this process, they could be able to learn. Of course, don't go for a precision with a, with a, for a mathematical precision to quantify this. It simply signifies a teacher cannot give you everything. He motivates, he initiates you into the learning stream of a learning. When you say primary learning, you know, by teaching alphabets, he holds your hand and fingers and that is actual teaching. But same thing we don't do as you grow. Anyway, if you go to the classrooms, law classrooms, 100%, 100%, especially in early 19th century and, and the first part of the 20th century, you know, all teachers were part-time teachers. They were advocates. Your master's degree concept was not there. They were all, they were all practicing advocates and judges. Out of love, they would come, not for money. Out of love, they would come to the colleges and teach. And majority, not majority, they're all evening colleges or early morning colleges. You know, for a fact, I did my law in early morning college. By then, I was working for central government. And I had a time. I had a time. Then, 100%, it was blackboard and chalk method. This is the method we call teaching, you know, chalk and blackboard or blackboard and chalk method. Have a chalkboard and then go stand before the chalkboard. Have you uh, that board, blackboard, have you talk, tell something, write, students make some notes, they you know, replica, they give the same thing in the examination, pass. Of course, now things have changed. I come to that point afterwards. That was the regular method. And another thing, there was no scope for a student, ordinary student to raise questions or whatever it is. It was one way almost. And no practical exposure. Today you have got a lot of mood code, these, that, lot kind of things, projects, internship, nothing like that. Then students, majority, you know, they would opt law, not as an option. Not as an option. It's a last resort. Sometimes you did not get seat in medicine or engineering or elsewhere. Then simply you are roaming. Then someone will advise, go and join law. And these people, you know, they become excellent persons. Even they can go hold the hold a constitutional position like attorney general and advocate general, whatever it is. That is the beauty of law. And majority of these uh, social activists and leaders, you know, who have given birth to the countries and societies, you know, are all lawyers only. Okay, anyway. The next transition, bigger transition. I'm telling you, bigger transition took place after the birth of Bar Council of India. Advocates Act came into being 1950. Then, I think 63, 62, this Bar Council came into existence. Bar Council of India, India. Then it was empowered to take care of legal education. Then they started doing the things. They wanted to give a professional approach. First, they introduced two years BL degree. Then they made it a three years degree. However, it was offered as a part-time course only, you know, through universities or colleges only. Then slowly they started master's degree, master's degree, many universities. 
and they started recruiting full time teachers then these things came next generation came full time teachers full time teachers like principals professors this and that and then <clears throat> slowly the universities started you know publishing the journals that is what we call research work and presumption always there now the bar they used to comment a failure in the bar gets into the classroom that is the teaching of course even today even today i find this biased kind of thing some advocates that tell, oh what do your teachers know teachers know just bookish knowledge they do not know anything real law is when you come to the court it is not totally true it is not totally true okay fine today's teachers outstanding their exposure and their kind of things really extraordinary anyway that a presumption was there even today a failure in the bar means you could not conduct the case you could not earn then go to the classroom earn something and run your family like that they used to tell but now it is not like that and so far as a then so far as a method is concerned method is concerned now the teachers have started adopting socratic method platonian and aristotelian method what is this friends normally you know in uh, many speeches and public kind of things you know they say no this is the socratic method the kind of it's very simple socrates is one of the known philosophers the best teacher old teacher no very senior to aristotle and plato also he used to have one method of teaching the philosopher great philosopher i don't want to get into the history of how where he born and what he did no no he used to have one method of teaching any subject you take what he would say question oriented dialogue you want the moment you meet a person for the how are you it's a question is it not how do you do like morning as soon as i you now got into this you know first madam greeted me sir how are you i said ma'am how are you is not the question and the question expects an answer is it not there second one in when in questioning you know there are types madam how are you that question simply i believe you are fine if you put that question options will come this is how he would he would train the students never socrates tell whatever i tell is correct just listen what i say no engage engage the students in discussion and allow them to develop their own ideas and perceptions sometimes even in the classroom even today we do it oh kritika madam she is in the classroom what she does no some 60 students are sitting no she wants to ask a question okay can you go for a compare this study between kant and hegel simply she will finger to a student hello please tell me it is not pre planned never she gets into the class a present today i should ask this question to this student only or if he cannot answer i should go to her if she cannot answer then let me explain never never automatically it will come that is what the socratic method my dear friends it has seen centuries and centuries even today it is relevant and these theories are relevant for ever there is more little different then we come to plato how can we forget these persons plato aristotle or you know socrates prior to him sophocles we cannot forget them at all then the plato his teaching is little different what he does you know very simple teacher i am just a facilitator i don't tell this is this 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 crow is black i don't teach i facilitate i simply take you near that crow and ask you look here is a bird what is this bird we never say the crow means it is two legs it is this with you no know, color there never 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 he says i am a facilitator the burden is totally on the student but he puts one condition everyone cannot become a student like can he says everyone cannot become a prince everyone cannot become a soldier 
everyone cannot become a ruler. So Plato's theory is totally different, unique. So student need to be genius, industrious, intelligent. Then only he can. Otherwise, it's not possible. Okay, and always, always, you know, he would emphasize the importance of education. in terms of character building then come to the next stage plato's student aristotle aristotle method oh empirical study the moment we get into the research we call oh what kind of approach yours empirical oh fine and even empirical deductive inductive so the technical things you know he used to adopt the inductive method and the deductive method and always go for an analysis go for an observation and always be critical be critical so this is what we call and he emphasizes on syllogism he used to adopt that technique syllogism with the syllogism you know he would develop the theory okay fine my dear friends nowadays any law teacher you know he's a combination of socrates plato and aristotle aristotle i got at the times you cannot differentiate them at all one thing you should keep in mind always look at uh, the teaching as the developmental point in the student perspective student is important concentrate towards the student and do the things accordingly of course uh, then big paradigm shift took place as i said earlier you cannot imagine the role of you cannot analyze the role of a teacher in the absence of development of the course as well as the system itself simultaneously they did grow okay paradigm shift what happened 1980s first two year course then they changed that into three year course after a degree and then one year apprenticeship with the senior advocate all these things were there then enrollment was compulsory bar council prescribed the subjects mandatory subjects all things happened but that point of time till 1987 moot courts were not there of course and there one they would even you know in 1978 i had one mock trial my teacher i told you the shin was author was 90 years old he did it out of their interest they were using but not as a part of curriculum then first major shift in legal education you know introduction of five year course integrated course professional so it has got far reaching effects point so immediately what happened moment to got five year course some tom dick and harry will not come and join it's only those Who are really interested in this profession? Who has got some try it? He will come and join. So they wanted to ignite that professional approach. Till now, see, there is no hesitation to tell that the approach was not professional at all. It was very casual, and they used to teach law subjects like teaching any humanities. That was the system. Just teach something, ask some essay type questions. They will answer. Evaluate thirty five percent. Give the degree. Go work with under one advocate. Then afterwards, you start your own practice, and you go always, you know, on trial and error method. Of course, I would like to just to break the monotony. I would like to you know uh, tell one uh, proverb. I think you will not uh, mistake me for this. Please take this and spirit, not by letters. How a person becomes good. professional you know how it's only an experience is it not it's only an experience but how that experience comes it is like this the barber learns his trade on orphan's head i repeat a barber learns his trade on the orphan's head i think you got the point the advocates you become an excellent advocate 
Yeah, but someone has already become a victim for his ignorance or whatever it is. Right? Like that. But today things have changed. That is why often I use that, you know, approach itself has a change. A very big paradigm shift. Then, not only full-time course, even teachers. For your kind information, I tell you, even when I was the principal of a law college, around 25 years before, only 30% only of the teachers were regular teachers. 70, they're all advocates, part-time teachers. They come, teach and go. Not available for any other activity. No kind of full-time activity at all. Three hours per week, come, teach and go. But when Madhavanam, instead of Madhavanam, I should compliment Bar Council of India. to Madhavanam, started this five-year course, all teachers are full-time teachers. With qualification, LLM, master's degree, either ML or LLM. Okay, then curriculum. This is very, very important. Curriculum and pedagogy. How you deliver the things? Even prescribing pedagogy, you know, curriculum is not a joke. It should have contemporary relevance. There should be a perfect nexus between the object sought to be achieved and how you are doing the things. Then, strong PG programs, the two research-oriented programs came into being in conventional universities. And the teachers, next generation, I call that new generation teachers. New generation teachers, you know, they all started doing research, getting PhD degree or going for publications and kind of things. Then, very, very important thing, Emphasis on case law study approach. In teaching, I think you must have already, I saw the brochure. Rather than I know, think on how to teach environmental law, how to teach constitution, like that, you know. The teacher become, all, you cannot teach all subjects alike. It's not possible. There are different approaches. When you come to that, you know, here, we tell, emphasis on case law study approach. That itself, you know, uh, if you want me to, uh, throw some light upon this. I may take some two to three hours to explain how you can go for this case study approach. It's very, very important. It is not just to take, you no know, citing a case. You can go Paul and versus Tretmas. Just taking that, tell the facts and go for the ratio. No, it is not like that. The approach is totally different. Then, the emergence of moot courts, internship, not only that, Next generation, not, not in the mood court. No, we do have computations like, you know, arbitration, counseling, large kind of thing, drafting, and attracting talented brains. Talented brains, not only for teaching, talented brains for, I mean, as a students also. As a students also. I do have personal experience with me. The students who topped, Neat and other entrance exam, gate and other entrance examinations, you know, sacrifice that they have joined law. They chose the law and now they are doing you know, tremendously well. Okay, fine. Next development. Next shift. 2000 onwards. Again, 25 years. How many national law schools are there today? Of course, one of my friends, he was making uh, an observation, of course, in a later way. Of course, in that, uh, when we were discussing, you know, even many vice chancellors of uh, estimated national law schools were there. He made said, look, always you say classification, classification, the caste and kind of the hierarchy should not be there. But that is there in legal education. The poor caste is national law schools. Now, second one, you call that the traditional universities. And the third one, all private institutions having all the resources, lot of money. Third one, why she asked. And poor Shudra is the private law colleges have neither any kind of facility, nothing. They look them like uh, untouchables. The students as a faculty, they said, of course, very late way. Very late way. He, he was making that observation that classification has come, re emerged like that. Of course, it's a late way of uh, analysis here. This era of national law schools, please bear it in mind, it is always just an indicator. National law schools cannot cater the needs of Indian job market or uh, the professional demand. That's impossible. Major, major supply is from 
law colleges affiliated law colleges that is why i have got a special love and affection towards the teachers and the students of uh, law colleges and the law students i have seen all these national law schools in fact i had to join nr madhav menon in 1987 for national law school as a founder faculty but i politely declined that offer i had a very good uh, friendship it is me who awarded him uh, the doctorate honorary doctorate in the 2015 on the doctorate so very very good uh, no very i should say elderly friend of mine may well be sure he used to say gurudev come and join me i said no sir because philosophical difference is there your law schools are serving only elite class i don't want that i cannot digest that so let there be no you know conflict of interest but he used to laugh no no it is not like that but nobody can ignore can take lightly his contribution and the contribution of national law schools because they gave different dimension towards teaching towards dimension towards curriculum towards diamond di different dimensions on placement and whatever it is then highly competent teachers with good qualification no students plan yesterday i had no ah uh, yeah i had an interview interaction with the students they are so clear they say why you are doing this sir i want to become a teacher law teacher how clear they are so the preparation itself is towards that another one says why sir i want to become a judge his entire concentration is towards that another one sir i want to become a corporate official his entire direction like that now the things are going on the designed like that today you look across the world of course i do not have exact statistics with me but i have got an estimated statistics as on today around 45000 law teachers are there in india 45000 law teachers it includes traditional universities that is conventional university government universities central universities then uh, affiliated law colleges national law schools and private universities having law schools put to together you know around 45000 law teachers are there and these law teachers have got a different problem that is different thing. i am not touching that but i am of the opinion that all this 45000 what you see today witness today are highly competent committed and they have got a definite goal this is the very big shift the paradigm shift and the law schools you know law colleges i call that law schools okay well, they have got 90% of the teachers they are full time qualified when they the holders of masters degree and 20 to 25% you know they are phd holders you contact you look into any teacher today he is a researcher now okay i i take up that aspect afterwards then that huge exposure to the students on co curricular activities sometimes people call that extra curricular it is not extra curricular it is co curricular that has become the part of your curriculum of you look at the latest circular of bci they say your moot court and other things should be you know uh, there in the curriculum right from uh, first semester itself yes without which it is not possible to uh, complete the expectations of that course at all then placement drive it was totally unknown till 1990s 1990s the first placement to my knowledge is the national law school i think it was in the year 1993 92 or 93 proposed once in a very late way in a, not to professor madhumanan but his a close associate who was a witness to that he shared that with me first drive had happened and one company one firm offered some ex salary to that boy that product of national law school that the salary was more than the salary of the then the director nr madhavan the salary he was drawing you know was lesser than the salary offered to the bright boy but nandan was so happy to see that when one he made a late comment sir look your state your student is getting that one but yours is this then he says yes that is true it is nr madhavan it is teacher it is a student always our thing is uh, i remember now again from mahabharata 
I remember Dona Acharya. What is the expectation of a teacher? Shishya di Ched Parajayat. Drona says, if anyone is there on this earth who can defeat me, I should be defeated only by my student, my disciple. Mean to say, we wish our student to excel, they should reach higher actives than what we have reached. It was the expression of your normal Madhavan. Anyway, then opportunities, nowadays, you know, multiple opportunities. Of course, that is not the area what I need to touch upon now. And proactive role of regulatory bodies. Okay, fine. Then, friends. Now, the first training program, National Law School, happened. That is a refresher course, exclusive for law teachers. The trend started in 1992. That is what I come 90s. 90s. Then many other universities also, traditional universities also, they started offering uh, refresher courses and orientation programs exclusively for law teachers. That started. Then again, the UGC made, oh, it is mandatory, having two refresher courses, mandatory for promotion and kind of things. Okay, fine. Then, PhD. I tell you one thing, when PhD is made compulsory, the benefit percolates down into the classroom. The student is the beneficiary. That is why we insist that much towards research and a, a PhD program. Then next, due recognition to the law teacher. Due recognition to the law teachers. Teachers have been awarded with Padma Shri. What more you want? Which teacher? Law teachers. Once upon a time, some 30 minutes before I made an observation that a failure in the bar gets into the law school. I mean, classroom. But now we say, a law teacher is acknowledged with Padma Shri. Just imagine how it has gone up. How the status has gone up and recognition has come. It is a very hard and thing, dear friends. It is not woven at development. Then, today, the next generation, you know, Again, shift is there. Unfocused. Confused a lot. Used to be there in 70s, 80s. 90s onwards. We have got a group who are highly demanding. And even their approach is uh, something different. I call that, I wish to call that. It's my point, you know. Freestyle approach. The students. You cannot expect, of course, my friends are here. How you, you used to be with your uh, teachers. Of course, at least senior teachers, I'm telling you. Don't expect the same thing from your students. Though. They are totally free today. That point of time, even to ask a question, genuine question, you would think twice, thrice, shall I ask this question or not? But today, generation is different. They send one SMS message. Hi. This is, the, this is how... Hi, like that they address you, they greet you. Okay, fine. This is huge generation gap is there. They are very professional. They are very, very professional now. I think this speaks volumes. This is how I would like to put the whole thing. In a nutshell. Look, friends. This is their role being played by the teacher. Of course, a combined expectation of institution, society, profession, and all stakeholders. Equip, explore, empower, and last stage enlightenment. First, you should equip your students. How? Stuff. You should prepare them. Give, give work, give work. Equip them. You ask any possible question, he is ready to answer. Whether answer is right or wrong, that is a different thing. That is subject to interpretation. But he, is, he has got some stuff equipped to take up the challenges. Any challenge, you have to equip your student. Then you explore, explore the possibilities, how you can do it. 
Yes, different techniques are there. Then empower. Now you have empowered your student, whether to become a judge or to become, you know, uh, a litigation lawyer or a consultant to your firm or whatever it is, a service, you know, to get into service, administrative service, whatever it is, empower. Now it's a full fledged ripened personality, what we call enlightenment. That is the last stage of any discipline or study. And beyond that, there is one more stage. We call that philosopher. I don't want to mention that now. Our job, law teachers and uh, the role of law teachers are present or tomorrow or even in the past, not to create any philosopher. Philosopher is not created. Philosopher is not made. Philosopher comes on his own or on her own. Okay. Plato did not become a philosopher because of some, you know, was not inclined to be. Mahatma Gandhi or Ambedkar, they were, in a way, they're all scientists, I mean, science only, philosophers only. How, how, how? On their own. On their own perception. I don't want to touch upon that. But these four important things, always, it's a very fa favorite thing of mine. I call that four E's. Four E. Equip, explore, empower, and enlighten. Your job is done. Whether to an individual teacher, or to the institution, whether it is a law school or whether it is a law college, affiliated law college, or whether it is a university or whatever academy or whatever it is. Ultimately, the whole role, you know, it transfers on, on these four things only. So, okay, then today teachers, you know, keep that as a background. Now look how they are doing. There's a big shift. Chalk and board mode to projectors. Technology has empowered you. Hardly use the chalkboard. Of course, one uh, in one of my previous interactions, you know, in a group, one uh, gentleman in a very light tone put that, okay, sir, now it is not that blackboard and chalk. Of course, we know we use marker, pen, and uh, smart boards. That role, of course, indirectly he was hinting that the role of teacher is still there. I agree. I just, I would like to note here that a technology-oriented teaching. Now it is technology-oriented teaching. Then Socratic to collaborative teaching. I think if you have got a number of staff, sufficient staff, two, three teachers get into the class and they go for debate and they ignite the collaborative teaching. And they ask the student to take the dias and teach. So different kind of the collaborative teaching. Then I believe in one uh, doctrine. Do you know what is that? The teacher in the classroom is a monarch by himself or herself. Nobody can question, nobody can define the role. Once you are in the classroom, not anything. It is you, the monarch. You do whatever you want. Nobody can question. Ultimately, you want the result. Therefore, I don't want to define. You please follow. Please be platonic. Please be Socratic. No. No. You know what to teach, how to teach, what to communicate, what not to communicate. Student, what to learn, what not to learn. Okay? Then, very, very important thing, my dear friends. Equipping the students with the stuff that is curriculum. Nowadays, of course, some 20, 25 years, but of course, that uh, no, little rigid approach is there in the traditional universities even today. To become the member of uh, the board of studies, which prescribes the curriculum and uh, pedagogy, you know, activity should be of associate professorship, should have put 15 years of experience, this and that. Today, it is not like that. Even a young, new entrant, you know, even a student will be there in the board. They will tell what that we want. We will be having the you know, uh, representation from the bar. Advocates will be there in that thing. Then we structure the curriculum and the pedagogy. And now, whether we like it or not, dear friends, now we are, we have adapted the theory of publish or perish. Not peril. There is a spell mistake. Publish or perish. If you publish, you will be having a bright career. If you do not have publications, you're gone. Perish. 
neck. It's very difficult to, to survive. So it is hint, directly hitting the research area, research credentials of a teacher. Then higher degree of competition among peers. If you have got five members as your colleagues, huge competition is there in between you in terms of publications, in terms of uh, outcome, in, ter in terms of, uh, you know, result. Yeah, we, we take that into, you know, one of the uh, yardsticks to measure the potential of the teacher. What is the percentage of passing in your subject? Like that we ask. And my dear friends, I have coined one statement here. Either to what we have discussed for about uh, 70 minutes, you know, a teacher today, he stands on the shoulders of his predecessors. We are not creating anything new. We are standing on the shoulders. They have already built something. We are on the shoulders of that. Of course, we are not shooting anything on their shoulders, but we are, we are standing on the shoulders of our predecessors. They have laid down a very strong foundation in this regard. Then, a good teacher disseminates the idea of principles of law and case laws. But he ignites new ideas. Example, if you take Puttaswami, uh, you see one teacher is asked, what is the truth? He starts criticizing the case. Why? He wants to see how the students respond to that. Then need to be proud, he need to provoke the students. You should provoke the students inside the classroom. For what? Not for physical fighting. Come out with new ideas. I still remember my great teacher, Professor Devidas. His approach, unique approach. Always he would start teaching something from a diagonally opposite side. For example, if you want to teach Keshavananda, never used to directly touch Keshavananda. He would say, what business the court has got to do this? What is the basic structure? No, that is wrong. Now, ultimately, he would lead us to come to a conclusion what it is and why it is required. Of course, these are different techniques. And he had another approach, typical approach to teach the constitutional law. First, he would say, be firm with the fundamental principle of constitution. Then go to that. If you want to learn judicial review, first you should know what is separation of power. Otherwise, it is not possible to learn that. Sometimes it happens when you go for curriculum, you know, constitutional law one, constitutional law two, public law one, public law two, and we put a separation of power in one part and judicial review in another part and some other thing, you know, judicial restraint in another part. Some all kind of uh, mixed masala happens. No, it is not like that. There should be a system. Anyway, whatever it is. With all that development of interpersonal skills, my dear friends, new thoughts are coming in. Even I have, I am trying to do some experiment in this. In uh, medicine, a pure medicine. Today, there is one course by name, Business Management in Hospital, uh, in a, uh, MBA in Hotel, ha the, the Hospital Management, Event Management. So soon you will have one MBA on what? On what? Legal for Management. Something, Legal Process Management. So specialists will come, how to organize it, how to do it. New theories will come. This is the growth. This is the futuristic study. Then adopt new methods and it take a lot of administrative works also. Unlike previous generation, I know you pretty well. My friends you know with me now, they must be facing this problem. They have been asked to take up a lot of administrative work. And in the classroom, Concept of between four walls is a slowly withering away. Just four walls concept is going. And you know the impact of this uh, COVID-19 and how we are doing online classes. That four life before four walls is going, and a teacher needs to be a multitask master. Multitask master, my dear friends. Then next. Earlier, a teacher would be a preacher. Now gone those days. 
now he's a facilitator if you start telling if you simply start translating whatever is there in the book the student will tell hello friend i know all these things tell something new uh, one of my of course i was on the rounds i was on the rounds university campus rounds you know a group of students they were outside the classroom i politely asked them what is this friends why you are here class is going on there just now i saw your teacher is teaching why you are here when a student came forward and said sir if you don't mind may i share one thing normally i never arrested the student never snub the student to give their opinions i said i patted the back and said come on tell me see now what i shouted why you are here what is it no no what friends why tell me what is this he said sir i am not ready to, we are not ready to waste one precious hour in the classroom sir and we feel we cannot learn anything new there therefore why to waste the time i know i can manage the thing i can pass that subject if passing is the yardstick i know sir i will fulfill your university requirements we do it sir don't compel us to get into that classroom what is their hinting that is the problem with the teacher not with the students here you need to be a psychologist you you need to be a multi task master you should you know you have a very good you should penetrate to the minds we call it you know parakaya pravesham you should get into the mind brains of the student and reciprocate after all look all the students do not remember what you teach them they remember who you are this is sentence to speak volumes my dear friends this is my experience in my life the students do not remember what you teach them in the classroom essentials of valid contract who will remember those things for the examination they write it and they go but they remember who you are it speaks volumes about your quality your communication skills how you are passionate towards them then how he manages how that present a teacher manages ignites the desires to learn new things there is nothing untouchable to a law teacher and a law student we don't have option nothing is untouchable then takes them to the shores of knowledge and makes them to explain new things i tell you one thing why it happened a uh, friend study sent back in usc a study was done by cam brain of harvard university press the interview uh around you know dozen dozens of law teachers senior teachers junior teachers of a prestigious law school and came out with a booklet their problems and their aspiration kind of things do you know the findings and 26 senior professors are very lazy they are not doing that not accessible they are very high ranking professors no doubt knowledgeable but not approachable and very lazy what is the use afterwards of course i have taken these the last to five things from that report deliberately have taken then they say the common opinion of those professors you know make difficult to think the teacher is a good teacher is one who makes difficult things simple and simple things are difficult that is also a technique then he should play the role of loco parentis surrogate the parents that approach should be there of course this is not just my observations i have taken the support from that report of a harvard university press then it takes part in all activities and always he initiates the change okay change in mindset or whatever it is and meticulously updated it. it is my practice even today if i want to get into the classroom first i go through today's newspaper at least two newspapers good newspapers then i get into the class and i visit the library at least alternative days or whatever it is whenever i find a time at least i will see what are the new arrivals of course for the past 6 months i could not able to do it because of this covid and other kind of things and administrative work otherwise that is my regular habit new arrivals i display the books in the library and i will see what are new arrivals because we should update ourselves additionally 
institutions are highly demanding and taxing today. Any amount of sweat on the part of teachers is very difficult. And we will evaluate the standard of the institution as well as the teachers on the basis of the output, end uh, product, that is the students, how they have come up, how many, how much placement has uh, taken place. Okay, fine. And no institutions are going for a lot of accreditation process, whether I am placing a NAC, whether I have got this ABA, whether I have got this NIRS, and all kind of things. Ultimately, that burden transferred to the shoulders of uh, teachers only. The network, a lot of things, and sometimes personal and family issues they encounter with the profession. It also happens. I am very, very practical on this point. And one of my colleagues used to be very sad. When I tried to give him counseling, with all confidence, he came, young teacher said, sir, I got facing a lot of problems, sir. What is that? Because of preparation and a lot of administrative work, I am not able to give sufficient time to my family, my wife. And now she is angry. And my family relationship is little strained, sir. And immediately I said, for next six months, no administrative work to you. Total relaxation. And I shifted all over it to the shoulders of someone. No, it all happens. And please, this is my experience, my dear friends. Self-improvement and self-criticism are the indicators of a good teacher. And tomorrow, where we stand, I think this background will tell us where we stand tomorrow. One thing, let on the 100 years pass. No substitute to a living teacher. Teacher is a teacher. And pedagogy and curriculum will be of a global standard. Yes. Because our products need to go and practice elsewhere, they will come here. Global standard, pedagogy, whatever it is. Then from generalist to specialist to micro specialist. Earlier, all advocates general, teachers are general. Now it is not like the specializations only IT, specialize as sports management, something. Tomorrow, micro specialization era will come. Not only that, my dear friends, technology and new techniques, to what extent we go, artificial intelligence will play a very big role tomorrow. Please take it from me. A day will come. A Robot sitting there, you know, all everything is already designed and uh, planned. It will deliver. It will deliver the lecture. If you take the question, you will solve the problem. That day will come. Right? That they will program the whole thing. It will happen. It will happen. And we need to update ourselves to technology. And the market prescribes the method and curriculum. Market is driven, not on basis. I like this, therefore I do like this. No, it's not possible. Market will tell, the profession will tell, you need to do it and we have to do it. Okay, fine. And uh, there is minor importance to individual perceptions. We will assess on the basis of output. Of course, the concept of classroom, it is taking the new dimensions. And last, yet a teacher is there behind all individual success stories. Thank you, friends. Change. That is the order of the nature. Change is the order of the nature. And I cannot say I don't change. I have changed a lot. I tell you, I don't take more than one minute. And when I was a young teacher, I had a good name. That is a different thing. That will be very strict. And there is a one day got into the office, my principal asked me, you know, he sent the pew. Sir, uh, principal said, called. I went, sir, what is that? My principal was uh, smiling and placed before me a piece of paper, that is feedback form. The feedback form, it was there. Sir, you are an excellent teacher. Excellent teacher. Excellent human being. Only request from our parties, at least smile once in the classroom. I tell you, that changed my entire dimension for the classroom management. And that student, of course, she is that lady, girl student, you know, she's a leading advocate today. She wrote his name, she said, smile once in the classroom. I met when I went, got in the classroom, I smiled, hi, friends. I got a standing ovation. This is change. We need to change ourselves. Then, Role from preacher to guide. 
preacher to guide today we are in the phase in, in that phase tomorrow we are just facilitators tomorrow we facilitate they know this generation is totally different we need not to transfer uh, any information they know it and positive thinking broad outlook unbiased understanding hard work and firm belief reflect the genius of your teacher i supplement here law teacher this is how i have understood the profession this is how i prognose the future friends so this is a challenging and beautiful opportunity is there for committed young faculty members and uh, all the best to you all and i once again congratulate uh, gauri madam and all colleagues for having given me an opportunity to share my little understanding and experience with you of course you have got every liberty to differ and i respect your views fine if there are any questions we can take up yes, madam sir. i think uh, i breached one thing i should uh, give a little more time for uh, interaction anyway no sir, problem sir, fine, sir. Fine, sir. stop sharing uh, the uh, uh, thank you so much sir yes sir uh, yes sir thank you so much sir for addressing the audience it was an entertaining presentation to all of us where sir has highlighted about the great law teachers and especially indian law teachers where all of us were closely connected sir so as a senior academician sir has uh, sh shared his experience which would guide definitely guide the young faculties like us sir uh, shall we move on to the question and answer please, session, sir please yes, please yes sir uh, sir we have received many questions in the chat box so due to the time constraint we will take up very few so the first question sir Uh, this question is from Dr. Uh, uh, Param Jit Singh. So, a jurisprudence we study is based on Western philosophers. Have we ignored the Indian legal philosophy? Is Indian philosophy relevant in modern times, especially in legal education? Yes, madam. So far as this aspect is concerned, <clears throat> it happened because the entire legal education was designed. It was designed on the basis of the curriculum of the West. that was the reason that was the reason the first generation teachers first generation teachers you know they borrowed the things what they learned elsewhere see we study machiavelli contemporary to machiavelli little senior to machiavelli was chanakya here you see the theories many a time chanakya stands ahead of uh, machiavelli are we teaching them no no we are not teaching like there there are lot kind of things kent in the 19th century he developed the theories of morals and ethics and in the importance of this you look at you just visit mahabharata you will find lot of things in shanti parva shukraniti sara lot kind of things but now trend has changed my dear friends many universities they have made this also as an independent unit to what extent they have gone let us hear in durus prudence they teach gandhism up to gandhism they have come they incorporate concept of dharma they incorporate different theories of uh, the kingship and other kind of thing and the latest gandhism it is called gandhism is welfare society concept and kind of thing and approach of uh, ambedkar it is there my dear friend things are changing young brains like you you know they have affected change they are in, in their process we are lost in lot of things and it is that high time to develop the indigenous you know system of approach and knowledge because i tell you one thing imitation is always incorrect and it cannot take us long we should have individuality because always a law reflects that society sentiments culture okay fine therefore if law is designed on some other thing philosophy designed on some other thing which cannot suit well to our local problem then law will fail society will face the problem yeah next question please yes sir uh, so next question is from mr nirmal singh ra uh, if in the past all the teachers were leading lawyers why not the government or the collegium were not ready to provide or elevate the distinguished jurists that is the law teachers as the judges of the constitutional court particularly when there is a provision in the constitution of india is there any special reason for not appointing the law teachers as a judge of the court right from the trial court to the apex court in india my dear friends yes i think it is article 126 if i am not yes, wrong sir. uh yes sir 
ಬಕ್ಷಿ no not not offer proposal there was a proposal one of the judges you know the proposal but immediately the other judges said no 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 then if he comes you know he starts teaching us the court room will become a classroom not to venture it's an unfortunate thing there is no depth for brains but unfortunately we have failed the system has failed to utilize that i join with you so for that aspect is concerned it is a constitutional failure there is no what i kept i don't means with the words there is no will there is no will i don't call it political will politics has got minimum role there to play but teachers now the judges there who are in the college you know behind them teachers are there but they do not know how to respect those teachers it's very unfortunate thing yes madam next question yes sir uh, sir uh, next question is from mrs gomati when it comes to the role of law teachers there lies a great level of challenge in delivering the legal concepts effectively to the dot even while the physical mode of legal education was followed but now considering the covid pandemic online sessions have become the order of the day and so what should be the teachers role in this new mode of technology yes madam whether it is uh, teaching the concept or whatever it is please take it from me the physical mode of teaching will uh, ease and up your job no it will not it will not whether it is a physical mode or online mode or whatever it is it is the skill what plays the important role if you start teaching the concept problem comes if you facilitate the student to know the concept your problem automatically comes that what i have been emphasizing today's generation this the students have got huge potential exposure and do have access to the literature if you take a paranjape or avatar singh or even you know salmond and your students are pattern or whatever it is keep a book big book before you and start reading law is the command of the sovereign or a property the hofeldian theory they will not appreciate that madam the technique is you should bring out the answer from their mouth it happens through repeated training and what say sir self but to learn new techniques adopt new techniques to teach the concepts it is not like teaching essentials of a valid contract much at all and it requires very hard reading very strong foundation yes sir thank you sir and then the next question is from mr s uh, sudhir chandran are law teachers a uh, social engineer do we have a contribution in building a better society is our duty more than that of a teachers from other disciplines yes i told you you know all this social movement they are basically teachers only it only these teachers who ignited the minds of uh, lawyers for a kind of i told you, you know earlier the great teachers they were lawyers and it is they who initiated social transformation behind all these social movements you find you know a philosopher or an advocate right no including including look uh, how the american constitution came into being this visit the history they are also same thing dear friends yeah lawyers play a very big role there there is no there, there is no confusion and uh, it is beyond it. yes they play very big role yes sir but Thank only you, sir. problem is only problem is recognition only problem is recognition but here i tell you a real teacher always work behind the screen like like aristotle to alexander aristotle to alexander is one simplest example 
when your question was asked whom do you sacrifice whether it is your wife your minister or your teacher or yourself he said i offer my wife i offer my commander i offer myself not my teacher why because he said if one alexander dies no problem my teacher can create 100 alexanders this is the philosophy madam this is universal truth but never they go for a crown here here god money this then that they are like fakirs we teach all we teachers you know if you look at the quality of a teachers had if they go to the bar and do the same effort kind of things you know they may not find a time to count money how much they have earned it is a fact but majority of them now they have opted this profession not by default but by option that is a very big dedication sacrifice a conclude problem is with recognition not with the contribution yes sir thank you sir and then the last question sir this is from mr raghupati how to balance between doing the new role as teacher and fulfilling the essentials to be a teacher according to the old norm now i tell you old norm and new norm city is uh, the society creates that the situation creates that okay always we tell everything world not necessarily be truth something supposed to be there in the book not necessarily be the truth is it not it is in your hands this for what is good what is adaptable what is relevant to today and do it isn't see some very good, my grandfather used to tell that we wanted to have this uh, photograph you know he said why you are taking this how long days it will be there on the wall when you are alive or as maximum you were grandson next you know next generation they look that as a new sense on the wall this is truth like the things also become obsolete the time takes care of that purana mityeva rasadu sarvam something my teacher used to teach like that therefore that is correct that is wrong you decide what is to be done what should be done and last thing i tell you madam the whether you like it or not that's what i last slide it whether you like it or not the things will change you strictly speaking if you ask me i tell i can i am not comfortable with online teaching but today i don't have option i should teach i should know how to operate it i should teach the circumstances that is tomorrow when you become a prime time you know you should know how to operate this uh, artificial intelligence or a robot that will time that time will come to you and a time may come only five students per teacher today bar council says a 20 students per teacher same bar council may tell no it is not like that if you want to have a very good student very good competent thing you know maximum five students per teacher and evaluation everything of course many of our universities have already adopted that you know curriculum everything you leave that to him i don't say what he teaches what he does how you evaluate ultimately if he certifies he is qualified we accept him if he says not qualified we discard him that time will come i tell you yes sir uh, thank you thank you so much sir for patiently answering all the questions sir and once again thank you for accepting our uh, humble invite uh, and uh, addressing our participants in your busy schedule sir thank no, you once madam, again sir. it's a pleasure god thank given you. opportunity and uh, madam gauri madam yes, for your sir. trust you deposited you no know, deposited on me <laughs> and uh, having chosen me as a resource person i don't know what resource i could provide <laughs> i share my experience no, it was a very excellent uh, session sir all the law teaching faculty are really benefited by your very valuable lectures sir thank you madam if thank there you, is of any use thank you very much thank you thank you very much and best wishes to all my colleagues here especially new entrants into this profession you have got lot of opportunities and challenges thank and you thank you that successfully in your hands thank you thank you all thank, thank you sir you, looking sir. forward for much more acquaintances uh, from you sir so any point of time madam i am available thank yeah. you thank you thank you namaste thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we request the participants to uh, fill up the feedback form within the time given and uh, meet you all again